And now we have our second uh, award winner, um, Ray uh, Chen from Baylor, and he's going to talk about the retina. I would like to first to thank the organizer for the invitation and then the CCI for the support. has been great. The past 24 hours has been great because I've been learning as a, a part of the eye network. We're trying to learn from other organ systems which are far ahead of us uh, as we are generating data. Um, so. Okay. Anyway. so uh, our group is particularly interested in the visual system, in particular the, uh, oops, that's the back. In particular, the back side of the eye, which is the neural uh, uh, tissue that uh, uh, captures the light and trans transform it into electric signal. So the back of the eye, the neural retina, is composed of like multi-layer, like three layers. The, the very back is the photoreceptor cells, basically have rod and cones, which capture light, and they convert to the electric, electric signal that basically relayed by the inner nuclear layer, which is, uh, have bipolar, amicron, uh, Mueller and uh, by, uh, horizontal cells, and then uh, it's sent to signal to RGCs, retinal ganglion cells, which eventually go to the brain and see the image. So we're particularly interested in this area because this is really the main reason for irre irreversible blindness in humans. So uh, there's uh, three um, parts of the uh, uh, goal uh, of the CGI funded uh, eye network. Uh, for our project, we're interested in identifying all cell subtypes uh, through single cell transcription profiling. We estimate there's about 80 to 100 different cell types in the neural retina uh, based on the previous study. And they also, we want to generate a spatial transcriptome because uh, the neurons are sort of mosaic, they are like, uh, mixed together. It's important to know their spatial relationship. And, and finally, we want to integrate the RNA seq and attack seq and spatial to get the high resolution spatial map for the community. So as offers know, it's important to get really high quality tissue to start with. Uh, so we really implement a very rigorous uh, uh, sort of sample collection, and the tissue will be processed within six hours. Actually, we're pushing to four hours right now, post-mortem. And then the whole clove will be dissected according to the, the protocol, and then the retina, like here, we, we cut into butterfly, and we start to separate it out. Although this whole thing, Whole, uh, tissue is very really small. There are, uh, you know, uh, hydrogenity in there. So particularly, we have a two millimeter punch into the uh, fovea region, which is basically cone where we see color vision. And then we have the peripheral, and then in the middle, the ring of macular. So we basically separate them into three regions. Since uh, many people, when uh, the donor, uh, they really have their eye exam regularly at very, you know, by ophthalmologists. So therefore, it's important to phenotype them because many of the uh, aged, uh, you know, individual has actually phenotype that they are not aware of. So uh, we take the, before we do that section, we do OCT and founder's image, and that will be phenotype, and the, 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 the record we send to ophthalmologists to review and cross-check. So as the uh, first, you know, pilot stage for the project, we want to basically add, uh, 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 producing sufficient number of single cell RNA seq that we can ena enable us to do the spatial and also try to optimize our condition. So this is the uh, data set we have deposited to uh, the, the, the uh, HCA portal, and it's basically come from four individuals. There are two uh, uh, profiling method, uh, both are single nuclear RNA seq, but pre-processing there are two types. The reason is, uh, is that uh, in, the, in the neuron, there's some are extremely rare. For example, the RGC only composed of 1% of all the neurons, and in RGC, there's probably 20 different types. And among them, they are not equally distributed. Maybe the 18 different types compose about like 10% of RGC. So, so we basically try to get like 0.01% uh, in the cells. Uh, because they are a critical, very critical for human diseases. Uh, so, uh, so, so to get those, we actually have uh, the new enrichment uh, because we start with nuclei, we don't have surface marker to use, but we do find it seems to have a new, new uh, gradient among different cell types, and we are trying to use the gradient of new and try to see whether we can enrich the rare ones. And of course, the other ones we take just, the, you know, just take the nuclei and then we just run through the machine. So we have two different types of data. So uh, we, we totally so far generated about 40 million single cells from 40 individuals. And then this is basically thread uh, TCNA map. We have about 70 uh, different clusters. The major cluster you can see is uh, basically rod photoreceptor cells, which is in the middle. 
So we look at four individuals. The three individuals are basically sequenced you know, through the, uh, without uh, enrichment. You can see they basically uh, very similarly align well. There are subtle differences, but pretty much they go uh, with the, right, uh, you know, the same cluster shape. And the four individuals we did enrichment on, and you can see that uh, they are actually depleted of the cells. We, we really don't want to profile the specific rod for, for the separate cells, but you should have a lot of other cells. So we were able to uh, easily uh, uh, classify those clusters into major cell types. So there's basically, uh, just uh, previously have been published uh, the primate and mouse that have on the retina, so we use those as guidance to, to sort of profile, I mean, to annotate our clusters. Overall, they're quite similar uh, between human and primate. And this is the bipolar uh, clusters. There's 14 clusters, and they pretty much line up very well, and we can, we can annotate their cell type reliably. But there are some differences. For example, the uh, BB, uh, the, the blue, blue bipolar cells are split into human in two, two clusters in, instead of one in the primate. And if we look closely, they do express the markers that you know, are sort of known to uh, in, the, in the blue bipolar cells. But there are, there are genes uh, such as this, uh, MEAG3, and then the uh, uh, PCDH9, uh, which are distinguished them. So the question is, are they really two different types, or are they different state? So that's something we, we, it's hard to know uh, without any further functional assessment. Um, there's also uh, you know, differences in the marker genes, for example, the DB4 group. Uh, those are the six uh, genes that show in primate that distinguish this group, like marker genes. And if you can see, you can see here from the plot, they really cannot distinguish you know, this BB4 from other rest from the human data. So there's, so there's a need, basically, even we have very good primate data, is you need to do human data set. We do have a lot of challenges. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not all the clusters are easy to annotate. This is American cell clusters. There's about 40 of those. So as you can see, with uh, the marker gene base, you know, searching for the reference, we can, mar uh, we can basically reliably get like 20 some mar uh, clusters. But there's 20 of them. We still, you know, based on marker genes, we don't know where they are. So, uh, so that's actually a big challenge for us right now is, uh, you know, we don't know how to name it uh, and particular functional. Uh, aspect of it. So we start to, you know, uh, uh, sort of dive in a little bit and see other than the cell typing, what we can do with this data because there's a wealth of sequencing data. So one thing uh, mimic what happened, uh, what had been looked at in primate is we look at the, the uh, marker gene or differential gene expression in different cell types uh, related or enriched for different diseases. So it's pretty clear that for the photoreceptor cell diseases, which we know of, like uh, RP, XRD, LCA, they are genes are generally highly expressed in the uh, in the uh, photoreceptor cells, and, and conversely, for the more common diseases like AMD and glaucoma, and then the gene seems to be expressed in other interneuron genes like uh, the the glaucoma, or in the AMD case, it's actually in the non-neuronal genes like uh, uh, cells like glia and the uh, endothelial uh, cells. So that's actually sort of consistent with the uh, the thinking. And then be, I think this data set will be interesting to dig into to, for, uh, to combine with GWAS study, as uh, uh, you know, yesterday people already talked about. So when we look at the GWAS hit and then uh, look at difference gene between the fovea and, and, and then the, uh, uh, the peripheral uh, genes, what interesting we, things we find is uh, one of the interesting GWAS hit set is the macular thickness. So which makes some sense because the gene differentiates between macular and furrow. Uh, so we, we, this is really preliminary. We're still in the middle of trying to uh, figure out uh, what's really happening there. Um, so, so a quick summary, uh, we have generated the first uh, sort of uh, semi comprehensive cell atlas. Uh, we think we capture about 90% of the cell types uh, we know of uh, uh, using the 250 uh, uh, quarter million cells uh, for four different individuals. And uh, we really ha just start, uh, uh, you know, sort of analyzing it. So that has only been generated about a month or so. So we just deposited, and because we think it's important for the community to have the open access to the data and to to, uh, to look at them, and also because there's so many uh, other groups who already have a lot of experience on their organ, we are really welcome you guys to look at the data and give us uh, guidance and idea on how to best uh, to analyze the data. So uh, we're still in the middle of in-depth annotation. Uh, and also, we try to optimize further on the UN protocol to get the extremely rare RDC types. Uh, and then when I think about the multiplexing protocol and that uh, we can increase the throughput. 
So uh, we also plan to generate the initial spatial transcriptal we use the marker identified so far. Uh, that's ongoing, and then we envision that when we do the next version of single cell, we'll be expand to about 18 individuals. We'll have one point, about 1.5 million cells uh, for, the, for the group. So uh, finally, I'd like to acknowledge the people who have done the work. This is people in my lab, and this is a collaborative work uh, funded by CCI network, uh, our, our groups, and also we are talking uh, with, with uh, have start clo uh, work closely with Josh Shen, who is the leader of the second I group um, funded by CCI. With that, thank you for your attention and take questions. Questions? Musa. Go ahead. Um, so your four patients, were they uh, the one depleted of the cones? Were they... Your, your fourth patient who yeah. was depleted of the, the rod cells, were they blind or losing vision? No, they, they are normal. So we just used that patient as our ground tools to see whether enrichment works. So uh, you do see have a little bit of uh, cells because we do... Uh, have some, you know, a little bit sequence for, for them just without depletion, but most of the data is depletion. Uh, yeah, new, new enrichment, yeah. Okay, so if okay. there are no thank further uh, questions, let's thank all the speakers in the session for a wonderful session. I think uh, we have lunch now, and if uh, you thought the spatial proteomics and transcriptomics uh, talks were interesting, then please go and uh, broaden your horizon in the breakout sessions. We have three of them um, focusing on spatial technologies, which I think will be a very interesting and a lot of fun.